stage. Uh, he handled uh, quite a few interesting things uh, on the acquisition and transaction side, uh, beating that he focused mainly in uh, investments in Africa, in the Middle East, North Africa as well. Uh, also on our panel here today, uh, Ronnie Lam from uh, Mauritius Commercial Bank. Uh, Richard Lowe, just come on the stage as well. Peter Bennett from Investec. And Michelle Latatina from Mediterranean Capital Partners. Please come onto the stage. There you go. And of course, just for housekeeping purposes, my name is Ramanyan. Um, I'm a journalist with CGT in Africa. And occasionally you might read some of my work uh, on Bloomberg. Right then. So, Gentlemen, um, Stefano set this up in a very interesting manner, but let me start with you, uh, Jeremy. So DFIs get into the continent, start the speed business about two decades ago, but you never really left. Has the market improved ever since then? Because we still see a lot of capital coming in from DFIs, but the KKRs, they're not coming here as much as they used to. Why? Well, I think that they I mean, you're right, the number of things that Stefan has said were very, very relevant. I mean, we've been active as DFI in this market for 40 years now. We have, Propalco has been active in this country for, not, for this continent from, uh, since 1977. We have six local offices on the ground, so we have a good flavor, I think, of what the market is. And I think if you look at, I mean, AFCA, the African Association of Private Equity and Venture Capital, publishes every year an LP survey, which is, I think, an interesting start base where they ask international investors, why are you not investing more um, towards the continent? And I think there, there are two, three important um, answers to that. The, the first one is that I think most um, international investors are starting to realize that um, private equity in Africa is not an asset class. You have more than 50 countries, different set of opportunities, challenges. So you have to know what's happening on the ground to be able to do private equity and source opportunities in the private equity space in Africa. Um, one of the message that the LPs gave to Africa in the survey was, economies are still um, too much dependent on community cycles. There's not much that the DFIs can do there, except you know, pass the message to governments that whatever profits or proceeds are received from the uh, uh, export, uh, from exploiting natural resources should be reinvested in other segments of the economy. Um, the second um, factor was the um, extreme volatility of the foreign exchange rates. Pretty much linked actually to the first factor. But more interestingly, I think, and Stefan have touched on that, it takes time to create value in the African context simply because of obvious reasons uh, deficit of infrastructure, um, complexity of the logistic chain, um, higher transaction costs than anywhere else in the world. Um, and, and so, as, as Stefano pointed out, I think there are interesting recent developments um, in, in the African context that can probably help answer some of these challenges, such as new forms of uh, private equity vehicles, for instance. Um, Jeremy, um, you've raised some fairly cogent points there, but again, going back to what Stefano pointed out, let me come to you on this one, Peter. The fact of the matter is that at the end of the day, this is a continent that will be home to well over 2 billion people in another couple of decades. But at the same time, we've seen companies like Nestle coming in on the back of the promise of you know, a rising middle class in Africa, but more people spending money left, right, and center. Uh, did we perhaps oversell that middle class hypothesis? Is it still an investment case of that one? Yeah, well, uh, it's a question of timing. And so, uh, just for the record, yeah, thank goodness for the DFIs, because if they hadn't actually stuck and invested through, then uh, there would be no African private equity. Um, and the reason that, that commercial investors haven't come in is simple, because on average the returns have been relatively poor. Uh, I think we're actually headed now for a period of five to ten very good years. When we talk about this, this will be the golden age of African private equity, right, starting now. And we talk through the rationale for that. Um, but in terms of the emerging middle class, all of those you know, lions on the move themes are still very much in effect. Um, what we had deluded ourselves, though, was that the commodity cycle wasn't important anymore. So if you think back to the, the Halcyon days of 2014, where oil was $120 a barrel, and uh, we actually believed that, that this endogenous 
middle class growth was now self-sustaining, when in fact, once the oil price went to 25, once the copper price dropped, once the iron ore price dropped, once the gold price dropped, all of these, the biggest economies on the continent were still very much commodity driven, particularly for exports. There were a bunch of bad